Hi, everybody. It's Mr. Gray here. We had another great week, uh, just three days this week, which really you know throws off the schedule for everyone, but it's really nice. We got a lot of work done in, in a really short time. Uh, next week, we're back to a full normal week schedule from January 24th through January 28th. So keep that in mind. We're back to normal. Monday and Tuesday, we get out at 210. Wednesday is an early day at 140, and then Thursday and Friday are 210. I have some big announcements. Um, about dates and things but first I have a kind of a fun announcement for you is that you know I would say this a lot in sixth grade because it's a different structure but we just passed halfway through the year so Friday uh, the 21st is the 93rd day of school so we're just past halfway and an interesting thing happens halfway through third grade now that we're in the second half of third grade your students are closer to their first day of eighth grade than the first day of kindergarten which is a wild place to be, but you're gonna hear me more often at the second half of this year, kind of get ready for that kind of upper grade kind of thinking um, because we're now getting close and there is a big shift from third to fourth grade and then beyond. But having that kind of um, idea in mind that you know, kindergarten probably seems like not that long ago, maybe because things have been different the last couple of years, but maybe in terms of academics haven't been that long ago, but now we're closer to eighth grade. We're closer to the first day of eighth grade than the first day of kindergarten. That's really like a wild situation to think about. So other announcements, I've gone through these before. Global School Play Day is gonna be Wednesday, February 2nd. We're gonna play all day that day, and I'll talk about it a little more next week, but we're gonna have board games. We're gonna go outside and play. We're gonna go outside just to play the board games. You know, We're gonna be going back and forth between inside and outside. That'll be a really fun day. Open house is scheduled for Thursday, March 31st. We have no school um, Friday, February 18th, and um, Monday, February 21st. We're gonna do Read Across America Day, um, which is a read all day day, on on Wednesday, March 2nd. Please continue doing your multiplication and division f- facts practice. I'll talk about a little bit more of that, about that in a second. Um, we didn't do spelling words this week, but we'll be back to normal spelling next week. And then finally, we finish our first wordament, which is a word tournament. The students submitted words, um, and they have to find out a little more what kind of word is it, uh, what's its definition, does it have synonyms, can you use it in a sentence. They submit a word, and we make a tournament-style bracket. So we had 32 words that were submitted. Um, it's on my web page. If you click on wordaments, it's also on the updates page, and you can kind of see that the students voted, you know, like a bracket, this word beat this this word, this word, beat this word. Um, so we got all the way to the finals. We had the finals this week. The winning word this week was pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis, uh, which is a disease of the lungs caused by volcanic ash. Um, and that was submitted by Edbert. So Edbert was the winner and he just beat out closely. Our runner up was onomatopoeia submitted by Hannah. So we've had some wonderful words and you can kind of follow along. The kids are getting ready now uh, and starting to submit for our next round, but we already have our first champion word. On to academics. Next week in Reader's Workshop, we're gonna continue our character studies unit. This last couple weeks, we started by talking about ways to get to know characters. And we even started growing ideas about characters and then growing deeper theories about characters. And what that kind of looked like was like first I'm getting to know the character like a friend. I'm noticing the traits. I'm able to like introduce my character to someone else because I'm thinking about how they act and the things that they do and what things that they say to get to know them just like I would get to know a friend. And then I start to develop a theory about that character. So we're reading a a, a book out loud right now called Dragons in a Bag and there's a kid named Jax and he um, has a lot going on in his life. His family might get kicked out of his house. Um, His mom is kind of taking care of that. His dad's not around. He passed away. And so his grandma is having to take care of him, but she's kind of weird. So there's a lot of things going on. So I'm first getting to know Jax, and then I'm starting to develop theories about him. And the theory we came up with is that Jax opens his heart to everyone. Um, And then I'm going to ask myself why that is. And the kids today were writing about why they think characters are the way they are. And that is really advanced thinking. Um, And so that's kind of what we are, that's like the foundation that we're laying. Um, And then next week we're getting into the character's journey. So we're gonna talk about how stories are shaped like mountains um, and we can watch characters go up and down. 
They have moments uh, that are high and then moments are low. Um, we're going to expect characters to face and react to trouble, and we're going to notice the role of secondary characters and illustrations in stories, what roles that those things play. So the next little section of our unit is all about the character's journey, and you can imagine as we get to know the characters, as we follow the character's journey, we're just creating building blocks for being really deep thinkers about fiction books. As I was talking before, how we're getting closer to upper grades, you know, as we get into upper grades, upper grade students can pretty much read any book, but the level of analysis and depth of thinking is what separates them in reading. So we're really trying to like push students um, and really kind of lay these foundational building blocks for really analysis of reading. In writing, we have been doing the baby literary essay, and that's closely related to like opinion writing. It has the same structure as opinion writing, which we haven't quite gotten into yet. But we've all, all the kids have been, we're reading the same story. It's called Each Kindness. Um, they've really looked at it deeply. So you could definitely ask your student about each kindness and what they thought about it, what they've written about it, because then they've now written uh, three different literary essays just about that really quickly, and they have found how to find evidence. Um, so that's going to continue. They're going to publish about each kindness and the literary essay that they chose to write. We chose a couple all together about characters, that a character was persistent, that a character was unkind, and they had to find evidence from the story to support that. Um, and then they're going to actually end up publishing the one that they choose. So they're going to choose like a... A, a, a claim, a big, bold opinion, a thesis statement um, about one of the characters in the story, and then they're going to write this literary essay, um, and that will lead into doing it in their own book. Now, reading and writing are really closely connected right now, um, and the reason is, in reading, they're keen to know characters and developing theories, which sound just like thesis statements. So reading and writing are doing the exact same thing right now, which is great, because they're really closely aligned, and again, we're trying to really strengthen like the ability for students to analyze books, not just read what's happening, but kind of think about how characters act and why they act the way they do and how that relates to how people act and how I'm supposed to understand all of that. So that's how reading and writing are going along, but they're both going to continue in that same kind of way and be really closely related for a little bit. We'll have a published literary essay next week, and then the kids are going to start to write literary essays about characters in their own books after that. In math, we're going to continue our exploration of division, and we're going to look at how division and multiplication are related through fact families and properties next week. So we're kind of doing two things right now. The first is we're really kind of doing, we're physically dividing things. So the students are making equal groups, and we're, we're sharing things fairly, and we're talking about division and how it can be understood in two ways. So the other day we were just sharing crackers, um, and the kids had like physical things to manipulate and make groups. So if I have 36 crackers, I can split those in a lot of ways. I can give nine crackers to four kids, but I can also give four crackers to nine kids. And so I am able to understand that in different ways. And what we would say is we would say that there is, I'm looking for how many groups and how many in each group. Um, and then we're also relating that to uh, multiplication. And we're doing that with fact families and also they're kind of like uncovering that themselves. But it's really important that the kids hopefully are taking a little time every week, uh, maybe even just a few minutes every day to work on multiplication facts. Um, you know, we're gonna continue working on those at school, but we have other things to do also. So if you ever have a few minutes and you can pull that up, that's a great thing to do at home because what we the kids just found out and a couple of kids like discovered and told me about this is that you know, if they know that four times three equals 12, if I wanna learn what 12 divided by four is, I don't have to learn anything new. I already know what 12 divided by four is because I knew the multiplication. Um, and so that's really great. I don't have to, I have all these division facts to learn, but I don't have to. If I learn the multiplication facts, I already know the division facts. So we're kind of learning conceptually what division is, how to, how to do it like physically, how to write about it, we're learning the equation, but we're also learning the facts and how to decipher the facts from multiplication. In social studies, we're gonna continue learning about the three branches of the federal government um, and the role of each branch. And in science, we're going to look at the life cycle of butterflies um, my caterpillars um, came, but they got delayed. 
And so they didn't make it alive for us to study, which is really unfortunate, but Mrs. Farley's um, did make it here on time. And so both of our classes are studying the Calvos. They're out in the hallway between the classes. Currently, what we've noticed is that when we first looked at the caterpillars, they were in these little cups and they have food inside um, and they look the same now a few days later, except much bigger. They've obviously been eating. So we're gonna continue kind of studying what happens in the life cycle of a butterfly. And then we're gonna be physically watching what happens as well. That's about it for all the things going on next week. Of course, um, email me uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. I hope everyone has a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.